Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's Wednesday. Hopefully your Wednesday is going great. Great. Let's see how everybody's Wednesday is doing. Mm. Hot coffee. I just went and filled my cup. Good morning, Stephanie. Good morning. Good morning, Esther. Good morning. Who else is popping on? Good morning, Ashley. Good morning. It's a beautiful, beautiful Wednesday morning. And I am excited about the day. I'll wait just a few minutes. Thanks. Thanks. I keep snipping away at it, which is not a good idea. Good morning, Quintina. Good morning. Good morning, Chrissy. Hi. Hello, hello. All right, let's jump into this because, again, I'm going to be talking so much. I'm so excited about the topic that we're talking about. Good morning, Gwinnett. We're talking about the armor of God, putting on the armor of God. What does that mean? How do we do it? How does this apply to my life? I hear this scripture. I've, I've seen it, but I don't really understand. Um, yesterday, we talked about the belt of truth and the importance of wearing the belt of truth, making sure that our lives, um, making sure that we have the truth of God's word as a part of our life, attached to our life applying to our life. We're reading through it. We're trying to understand what is the truth of God's word. And we are adorning our waist with the truth. That truth is going to protect us, right? It's going to um, help us to sift through what we um, believe, knowing what we believe, knowing what the truth of God is going to help us later on. So today we're going to talk about the breastplate of righteousness. So let me read for you. We always start out reading Ephesians 6. So let me read this for you. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, here we are, therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, Take up the shield of faith with which you can ex extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Woo! Okay, big, big passage. But... um. But today we're going to zero in. We're going to focus on the breastplate of righteousness. What does that mean? I don't understand. Okay, so yesterday we talked about that, the belt of truth. We, we have the word of God that we're sifting our life. We're measuring our life up against the word of God. What is truth? What is not? If we don't know, we go to the word of God and search that out. What is truth? So that we can have the truth of God around our waist. Good morning, Nicole. Good morning, Esther. Good morning, Elizabeth. Here we go. Righteousness. What is the purpose of the breastplate? First of all, as far as armor is concerned, um, breastplate serves as protection for some of the most important parts of the body. It's going to protect our heart, our lungs, um, and other necessary organs for life. Therefore, if a soldier did not wear his breastplate, he was vulnerable to an attack that could result in instant death. Instantly, if we're in battle, we can get shot here, we can get an arrow here, and we're going to instantly die. So we have to learn to protect ourselves. And that the breastplate of righteousness is going to do that. So what is righteousness? Um, there was a commentary I read, Adam Clark's commentary, and it says the following. As the breastplate of righteousness defends the heart and the lungs and all those vital functionaries that are contained in what in what is called the region of the thorax, so... This righteousness defends everything on which a man's spiritual existence d 
depends. So the righteousness, what is righteousness? We're going to get into this, is an essential part of walking um, of our armor. It's going to protect us, going to protect our heart. It's going to protect our lungs. It's going to protect spiritually um, the person that we are, the livelihood. So what is righteousness? Righteousness is this. Righteousness means to obey God's commandments and live in a way that's honorable to him. So righteousness is kind of living our lives in um, aligning our lifestyle with the truth. So yesterday we talked about what is truth. What does it mean to be truth? We're going we're gonna to look for the truth and we're going to make sure that we hold on to what is true. The word of God is true. We're going to measure our morals and our life standards by what is true. And righteousness is applying that to our life. Righteousness is living our life in such a way. Psalms 106.3 says, How blessed are those who keep justice, who practice righteousness at all times. So here's the deal. Let me lighten the pressure a little bit. So does that mean that we have to be perfect? No, because no man is perfect. No one is perfect. We're never going to be 100% perfect. Jesus was perfect. That's about as close as we're ever going to get. And we're not Jesus. But what that does mean is that we have to learn to be obedient to the word of God and to live a life that reflects that. Priscilla Schreier gave a great example of what this means. Stick with me. She says um, her and her sons were going out fishing and they um, they fish at their neighbor's pond. And their neighbor has a boat, just a little metal tin fishing boat that they go out in the middle of this um, lake on their property. And so Priscilla was thinking, if me and the boys get in the boat, then we can go out to the middle of the lake and maybe have better options for fishing. So she looks over at the boat, but then her wheels start turning because the boat is flipped upside down. And in this sort of um, atmosphere with the boat turned upside down, it's moist, it's dirty. There's probably creatures in there. There's very likely creatures living in there because it's um, a dark, moist um, place, right? That's where creatures live. So she's like, oh, little creatures. I don't know if I want that. And, and why do they live there? They live in this. They, they inhabit this place because, it, um, because it's what they want. It's what they need. So when you create an environment that little creatures like the dark, moist, right? Then you're going to get little creatures. It's an open invitation for little creatures. But if the boat was turned upright, upright, it would stay dry. It might get some dust and stuff, but it's going to stay dry. It's going to be able to have light come in. And it's the same way with our lives. If we remain, if our lives, we live our lives in a way that remains upright upright, we're holding the right, righteous standards that God's word tells us to live by. If we're trying to live upright, then God's light, right? God's light will be able to shine in our lives. We'll be able to have no dark places. Those creatures won't be able to live there because it's not a, an environment that invites the little creatures, right? But if we do the opposite and we live in a downright position, right? An unrighteous position, then our lives are going to be an, an open invitation for the creatures, the creatures, the darkness, the hard stuff, the yucky stuff to come into our lives. So we as Christians must live an upright, a righteous life. That seems overwhelming, right? Because like I said, no one's perfect. So what does this mean, Jessica? I'm never going to be perfect. And then God's going to be mad at me. It's really not that hard. It's really not that complicated. If you're buckling yourself with the belt of truth, you're learning and sifting through what is truth and what is not. And we find the truth in the word of God. We live in a lifestyle that uh, in a culture that has information at our fingertips. We can Google, we can, um, you can ask a friend, you can read a book, you can grab, you can search very quickly to find scriptures that will show you what the truth is. You can open up your Bible for yourself and be able to read that. Um, let me give you a couple of examples of people that weren't perfect, um, but they were called righteous in the Bible. The first one is Abraham. Abraham was labeled as a righteous man. But let me tell you, Abraham was by no means a perfect man. I mean, Abraham lied. Abraham tried to, um, 
I'm trying to not give all the details so that it doesn't take up too much time, but Abraham tells about his wife. He gives away his wife twice to Pharaoh, like says, she's not my wife. You can have her to, um, to try to save his own life instead of being honest. So he didn't, he didn't have perfect character. He didn't do everything perfect, but there was an obedience um, in his faith in the end of his life. He wanted so badly to be obedient to God. He wanted to be able to fulfill the promises and the prophecies that God um, had spoken over his life. Um, there was, so he was working in obedience. Abraham made a lot of mistakes. A lot. But in the end, it was his faith in the promise of God that guided him and his obedience to God with the sacrifice of his son. So we read of the story. Maybe you've heard of the story of Abraham taking his son up to be sacrificed. Um, and he he does it. He takes him all the way up there and God saves his son. God has a, a, um, works out a different situation or different um what is the word I'm looking for? A different way of, of going about things when he gets up there. But Abraham was obedient. And that's the part that we have to latch onto. It was his obedience. It was his faith that drove him. And that's what we need to do. We need to be studying the word of God. And when we realize, ooh, I don't think I'm doing that right, then we just need to make some changes in our life. It's a choice by choice situation. Uh, another man was Abraham's nephew, Lot. Lot lived in the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. And, and it was um, nasty and evil. And there was so much immorality. There was ooh, so much going on, but Lot did his best to protect his family. God did his best to live righteous and in a very unrighteous world. And because of that, God made a way for Lot and his family to be able to leave before the city was destroyed. And, um, and Lot was obedient in the things that God had told him to do. So it's really about just being obedient studying God's word, and then applying that to our life and learning to be obedient, obedient in that. So how can we put this on? We can start by being knowledgeable of God's word. That will allow us to understand how to live a righteous life. When trials and temptation come our way, we can base our decisions on his word. In addition, prayer, we can ask God to empower us to resist living in, in sin and do what is right according to him. First John 3, 22 says, and and we will receive from him whatever we ask because we obey and we do the things that please him. Because we obey and we do the things that please him. Those are very important parts. I think too often we 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 open the Bible and we maybe hear some things and we're like, oh, okay, I kind of like that one. I kind of like that one. We think it's like Burger King. We can have it our way when really we need to be aligning our lives to the full truth of God. We can't take a half a truth. We got to take the full truth of God. So maybe there's some things in your life today that you're like, oh, I know that this is wrong, but maybe today is a day that you stop making excuses. You stop making the butt word and you just make some changes to your life to say, God, I want to live a righteous life. I want to be protected by righteousness. So when the enemy comes, when trials and tribulations come, when people want to try to say something against you, your life is being lived in such a righteous way that God's light can shine, that there aren't the little dark corners that people can say what they want. People will say stuff. The enemy will still attack you, but you know that you're living in obedience with Christ. And with that, you can hold your head up high and know that you can walk confidently knowing that the arrows that the enemy throws at you, the things that are coming at you in your life, they are not going to take you down because you are girded with the belt of truth and because you are walking in the with the breastplate of righteousness that is going to protect you. It's, it's the opposite that happens when we choose to live a life that and that way, okay, I kind of like that. I'm going to be a nice person, but I might have to tell some lies sometimes because that's just how I live. Um, I like her, but I don't like her. And I really need to share my, my opinions about that, right? You can't just pick and choose. You really have to start to apply it. And it's just one step at a time. Let me read this to you. There's an ancient Proverbs that says the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. In a similar way, the journey to putting on the breastplate of righteousness begins with a single choice. Life involves a series of choices, and we can work at this one day at a time, choosing with God's help to make our next choice a righteous one. So it's not overwhelming. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be overwhelmed. You just got to start with the choices at hand and choose 
oh, here's the situation before me. What does God's word say about this? God, help me to make a righteous choice and then make the right choice, make the righteous choice and start doing that every day, just applying that to your life every single day. And you will see that, that there's a confidence in that. There's a, um, you can walk with your chest held high because you know that whatever the enemy throws your way is just going to bounce off. And, and uh, all you'll hear is the reverber reverberation of the breastplate of righteousness. I love you, ladies. I'm so excited about, about um, going deep in this study. I really think it's a good time for us to, to learn about this, to learn to put on the full armor of God so that we can be ready and strong to stand and stand firm in the things that we're wanting in 2019, the things that we're praying for in 2019. I'm so excited to do this with you. If there's something I can pray with you about, or maybe you have questions I don't understand, can you point me in the direction? Please message me. I want to help you. I want to do life with you. That's what this whole thing is about. I'm um, doing life together. Let me pray with you. God, I thank you so much for this group of women, God, that we get up every morning and we put you before us. We put your word before us and we study. We want to grow together, God. I pray that you would help us, Lord, to uh, walk in righteousness, God, that we wouldn't want to be like that boat, God, turned upside down, God, where the darkness and the moist thing and the creatures live, God, but that we would want to live upright, God, where your light can shine in our life, Lord, and can illuminate the dark crevices, God. There would be no creatures that would be able to inhabit this place in our lives. So God, I pray that you would give us that confidence. God, I pray that this would not be an overwhelming feel feeling, God, but that we would understand that it's just every day, choice by choice, decision by decision, God, that you would help us to make the true righteous decisions um, to be able to align our character to the truth of your word. And through this, God, you're going to make us strong. You're going to make us um, stronger in our faith, God, stronger in our um, obedience, Lord, that maybe one day when we get to heaven, God, that you will say that we lived a righteous life, God, not a perfect life, God, but a righteous life, Lord. I praise you and I thank you for that, Lord, and thank you for all the people in our life that are watching the changes happening in our life, God, our coworkers, our friends, our family, our kids, our husbands, Lord. I pray that you would continue to change us, God, so that we can show them the true light of who you are, God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, ladies. You guys have an awesome day. I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Good morning. Good morning. Uh-oh, I'm losing the YouTube. There we go.